Hello and welcome to the Planning Capital Planning Commission meeting of June 2nd, 2022. In accordance with current Santa Cruz County Health Order and the Governor's Executive Order N2920, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Commissioners and staff are meeting via Zoom and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting using Zoom or a landline slash mobile phone along with how to submit public <laughs> comments during the meeting tonight is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the slide now shown, and on the published meeting agenda. As always, this meeting is capable cast live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8, and AT&T U-Earth Channel 99, and is being recorded and should be replayed the following Monday and Friday at 1 on Chart Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live on our city's website, and our technicians tonight are Olivia and Brian. <laughs> so with that, we can open this meeting with the roll call. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Louis? Yep. Commissioner Chris Benson? Here. Commissioner Newman? Here. Here. Commissioner Westman? Here. 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 Move on to item two, oral communications. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda tonight? No, just one quick announcement. Uh, the community development director is not gonna be at the meeting, so I'll be serving as the acting director for the meeting tonight. Good luck with that, Brian. <laughs> All right, we'll move on then to public comments. This is an opportunity for the public to make a short comment on items that are not on the agenda. Uh, Brian, do we see any hands raised or emails regarding public comments? No emails. No hands raised. Okay, so uh, nothing that is not on the agenda. How about uh, commission comments? Are there commissioners who wish to comment on something that is not on tonight, tonight's agenda? Uh, let me go to gallery view to see if anybody's hand is raised. Can I do that? No, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to assume no one's hands are raised and therefore move on to staff comments. Staff, do you have any comments? No comments. Why can't I do that? Okay, I can read. Yeah, that's how I can do that. All right. Okay, then we'll move on to uh, item three on the agenda, approval of the minutes. We have two meeting minutes, um, items A and B. Why don't we try taking them both at once? Are there any uh, comments or uh, anybody want to make a motion on minutes approval? This is Commissioner Westman. I would make a motion to approve the minutes for April 7th and for April 21st, 2018. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Westman and a second by Commissioner Roof. Uh, any further comments or questions? The uh, seeing none, uh, shall we take a vote? Let's let's vote on this. Uh, can we have a roll call vote, please, Louis? Yes. Commissioner Chris Benson. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Roof. Aye. Chair Wolf. Aye. Uh, minutes are approved. Move on now to the consent calendar. Um, there are two items on the consent calendar. Does anybody of the on a, oh, in the public or in the uh, commissioners wish to remove any of these items from the consent calendar? Um, Brian, are there any hands raised on that? No emails, no hands raised. Okay, uh, then uh, are there any discussions on, on this that we wish to bring up? I'd move for approval of the consent items. I'll second it, Commissioner Westman. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Ruth and a second by Commissioner Westman. Uh, if there are no, any, no other comments, why don't we uh, go ahead and take a roll call vote on approval of the consent calendar. Um, Louis, can we have a roll call vote? Yes, sir. Commissioner 
this person? Hi. Do you know your name? Hi. Do you know where she is? Hi. Hi. Chair Wood. Hi. Consent calendar is approved unanimously. So let's move on to public hearing. We have one item on the agenda, which is 4800 Opal Cliff Drive. Um, staff, do we have a presentation? Yeah, thank you, Chair Wilk. I'll be delivering the staff presentation. Um, we have a slideshow for you. Um, so 4800 Opal Cliff, this is before the commission uh, with two entitlement requests, a coastal development permit and a conditional use permit. The site is actually located right at the city boundary. Uh, and you can see in the upper right corner of the photo here, this is the three-way intersection of Opal Cliffs Drive and Cliff Drive. And specifically related to this request is some repair work to a Shot Creek bluff wall. Uh, the approximate area of the wall face is about 6,500 square feet and was originally constructed in 1998 with a larger project uh, that also included the bluff toe sea wall that you see below. But um, to be very clear tonight, there's uh, no proposal associated with the sea wall, just the, uh, the Shot Creek bluff top wall. Uh, this photo is from an inspection report that was prepared by the applicant's engineer. Uh, it helps define what's actually being proposed in terms of the, the physical work on site. So I've highlighted, uh, this is the up coast side of the wall in blue. Uh, there's a, a, a bit of overspray of the original constructed shotcrete wall. And the proposal is to cut that back uh, and make it flush and reduce some of the erosion that's happening behind it. And then there is a 22 square foot section shown here. It's 11 by two as described in the inspection report. Uh, it's at the base of the shotcrete wall and has been uh, deteriorating and lost some debris down onto the beach. Um, my shapes here are, are relatively of scale. Uh, probably that rectangle is not of the exact shape, but um, it would have to conform to the bottom of the wall and is approximately uh, the right size. I'll also point out the uh, the person standing there at the base of the wall just so you can get an idea of the scale. Other area of repair, uh, this is toward the middle of the wall at the base is a 30 square foot area. Uh, there's a void that is documented in the inspection report that has also fallen away. And uh, the proposal is to dowel into the, the base of the existing shotcrete wall and add new shot creek. Uh, additionally with the proposal is a maintenance and monitoring agreement. And so this would be a recorded with the property an agreement between the property owner and the city. And uh, the template that is attached to the staff report was based on a template that had been used with a prior project with the county. Coastal Commission staff and city staff uh, both did several rounds of edits on it. Um, one of the trade-offs uh, is, and the Coastal Commission was interested in this, is that every five years we would get an inspection and monitoring report. And the trade-off for the property owner is that for minor repairs such as this, uh, they wouldn't necessarily have to go back before the commission if the community development director determined the repairs to be maintenance. Um, just wanted to tie back. This is a little outside of our, our usual business. So I've got a couple of slides to talk about code and policy and what led us to our recommendation. Uh, so tying this back to why is a coastal development permit required? I've listed the code section here. So a bluff retaining wall and associated maintenance that requires permanent construction materials is a trigger for a coastal development permit. Uh, and then conditional use permit an accessory structure in the environmental sensitive habitat area is the trigger for the use permit as well. The 1998 approval included a use permit. So this is an amendment there too. Uh, the land use plan of the local coastal program, uh, there was a couple of policies that are, are pertinent to the proposal. Uh, Roman 7-7 this is talking about uh, beach and bluff erosion specific to bluff and cliff top development shall be approved only if design and setback provisions are adequate to assure stability and structural integrity for expected economic lifespan 
at least 50 years. So tying it back here, our conclusion was the wall was built in 1998. It's in year 24 of its life cycle, and the maintenance is appropriate. Uh, Romans 7-9 goes on. Can we, talk stop? Can we interrupt there? Yeah. When I look at that policy, it looks to me like that's about building a house above the uh, bluff rather than stabilizing the bluff. Yeah, I, I would I would respond to that by saying that, the, that this wall is also defined as development in the in the um, the zoning ordinance, uh, the coastal overlay. Okay. But yeah, I, and and to also to even elaborate further, there was no specific policy or section that specifically talks about this situation. So it is a bit of a tying a couple of policies together to uh, to make a determination and, and ultimately a recommendation. So understood. Uh, as far as uh, policy Roman seven and nine, it talks about shoreline structures. Um, shall be permitted only to serve mm -hmm. coastal de dependent uses and to protect existing development, uh, shall be permitted only if non-structural solutions have proved to be infeasible. So our conclusion was with the wall being built in 1998, that determination had been made at that time. The wall was existing and protecting existing development and therefore the maintenance is also appropriate with this policy. Uh, just highlighting a couple of the Specific conditions, this is uh, just some paraphrasing of added condition number nine. This specifies an aquatic herbicide. Um, there's going to be a requirement to remove some invasive pampas grass, uh, but the, the method would be just to cut off at the rooftop and uh, apply an herbicide. So the Coastal Commission wanted to make sure it was a, an aquatic type of herbicide. Condition 10, uh, there's some noted in the inspection reports and debris on the beach. This could actually happen anytime. Uh, there's a requirement that that be removed. And then we added a condition to comply with uh, the migratory bird treaty. So there's some protections around the bird nesting season and protocols if work is going to happen uh, within the nesting season. And then lastly, would be the shot creed to match existing color and texture. Um, that just about does it. I, one other point I'd like to make is, is I noted the wall surface is 6,500 square feet and uh, collectively this is a 52 square feet of area. Uh, it's less than two and a half or just about two and a half cubic yards of material. So it's a relatively minor project uh, in the overall scheme of, uh, of construction, but uh, there's layers of policy here and uh, the Coastal Commission being involved. So uh, we're before the Planning Commission. I do understand the applicant uh, wants to make a, a brief statement, and uh, that's the conclusion of my report, and I can take any questions. Are there any questions of staff on the presentation? So let me get my uh, hands up, see if anybody's raising their hand. Uh, Mr. Westman. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make certain that I understand what's happening where the pampas grass is growing through. Mm -hmm. So those areas, the grass is just going to be cut back and an herbicide is going to be used to kill the pampas grass. But it seems like in those areas, they, the pampas grass is broken through the shot creek, so there'd be a hole there. Are those going to be repaired as well, or are they just going to, to leave that? Yes, with the proposal tonight, it's, it's just as I defined. So the applicant can talk about potentially if there's a future plan for those, but uh, that's not, not part of the proposal. Okay, thank you. Other questions? I have a couple questions. Um, this 1998 um, approval, um, it talks about a 50-year structure. Could it be interpreted that since it didn't last 50 years that the whole uh, agreement is null and void? <laughs> I mean, it's not a 50-year structure, so we'll let's see what happens when the 50 years runs out. 
Um, yeah. Okay? I'm glad we have a lawyer present because <laughs> I just uh, sure. Go, go ahead, Lola. Yeah, yeah. So um, typically in, in agreements like that, when you talk about a 50-year structure, um, you know, that that doesn't preclude uh, repairs or maintenance. Um, it's sort of anticipating that the structure itself will be viable, uh, you know, for a period of 50 years, provided that, you know, adequate repair and maintenance is conducted. Um, and then at the 50-year mark is typically when, you know, you would look at things like, potentially replacing the structure entirely or um, demolishing it. So that brings up my next question, which is this maintenance agreement, uh, which uh, I guess <clears throat> it, the term minor repairs are involved. Who determines what a minor repair is? Let's say at, 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 year, tw at year 30, the thing is completely crumbling and they quote repair it by reconstructing it is that would that come before the planning commission or is that considered a minor repair or is that tbd yeah as it's written it's it's the determination of the community development director um i mean i would say that this part of that determination would be to probably look back through records and to see how delicately this was handled i, I would think that would be part of the decision um so it's left to the determination. There's uh, there's not actually uh, any like measurable specifics as what percentage of the wall or. So by agreeing, uh, let me may understand. So if we agree to this maintenance agreement, then they could maintain that wall in perpetuity without ever have, ever coming back in front of the planning commission. Is that correct? For minor maintenance, yes. And they would also have to continue with their inspection and monitoring program. So what about after 50 years? It would still wouldn't come after uh, up to the planning commission to review the after 1998 50 year agreement is, is expired? Yeah, as it's written right now, there's no, there's no sunsetting provision or, or expiration of the agreement. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of uh, the staff? All right, let's let's move on then. Uh, Susan Westman, your hand is still up. Is that? I assume that's just. Sorry. Just, just feel. It's going down. Okay. <laughs> um, next, uh, I guess we'll move on then to public comment. Uh, you said the applicant wishes to make a statement. Yes. Uh, Gonna turn on the microphone now, Deidre. Can you hear me? Yep, we have you. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, my name is Deidre Hamilton, and I am the property owner's representative on this matter. Um, I don't have a presentation as such, but I do want to answer some of the questions and comments and maybe give a little uh, background and texture to um, the conversation that your commission is having. Um, I actually started working on this in 2020. Um, it started out as a application to do some minor repairs on this seawall and not just the upper portion, but the entire wall. And uh, George Drew, who I believe is also um, on the Zoom call and is the contractor that is going to be doing the work. And Susan, later on, we can have him answer your question about the pompous grass. Um, but he got in touch with me because uh, previous to this, he had done some re minor repair work on the walls, had gone to the city of Capitola, and have been given a, a grading permit to do some minor repairs on the wall. But when he went in this time, he had been told that he not only needed to get a grading permit, but he needed a coastal permit. And at that juncture, he needed to get a coastal permit from the Coastal Commission. Um, so he brought me in to help him with that particular um, entitlement. 
so my first conversation was with the Coastal Commission, with uh, Rainey at the Coastal Commission. Um, we went through and we dug through all of the entitlements that had uh, gone through the city of Capitola, as well as through the Coastal Commission uh, itself. And as Brian uh, outlined to you, there have been a um, um, permit issued in for the 1998 permit that was issued. There had actually been appealed to the Coastal Commission. There were some additional studies and work that had to be done. That appeal was withdrawn, and the permit that was issued by Capitola was reinstated. Um, at that time, as you mentioned, there was a six-year lifespan that um, didn't necessarily sunset. It didn't mean that the wall was to go away in 50 years. But when you give an approval for a coastal protection structure, it has to last at least 50 years. So when they grant an approval, the engineer that is designing that structure has to guarantee that it will last at least 50 years. And the attorney is correct. That also assumes that there will be maintenance and repair done over that period of time in order to ensure that that 50-year lifespan can be realized. So over the 50-year span with maintenance and repair, there shouldn't be any difficulty. At the end of the 50 years, if you get another 50 years out of it, you know, that, that's looked at as bonus years. That would be excellent. But the work is guaranteed to last 50 years, and the approval is based on a minimum of, of a 50-year lifespan. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is the maintenance agreement, the maintenance and monitoring agreement, is a requirement that came through our discussions with the Coastal Commission. It wasn't something that came from us organically. We originally, when we were talking with the Coastal Commission, they want, wanted to originally take jurisdiction of this whole thing. And I'm sure you've had experiences dealing with the Coastal Commission. We probably wouldn't, even though this took two years to get to this point, to do what was it, 26, 27 square feet of maintenance and repair, it probably would have taken 10 years to get this far with the Coastal Commission. So we decided that it wasn't worth the time, effort, or expense to go through that. So because the area in question one, it had been approved um, and entitled by the city of Capitola, and two, it was um, above mean high tide line, Capitola could take jurisdiction of this area. So Rainey and she checked with her superiors, of course, agreed that if we only focus our application on this one section of the wall, and if we agree to a maintenance and monitoring agreement to go along with the application, then they would not appeal that to the Coastal Commission because that was in keeping with the way that they themselves issue permits um, when they do their coastal permit. And the purpose of doing the maintenance and monitoring agreement is so that these sorts of minor repairs, it really isn't necessary to have this sort of review to remove pompous grass. It's a little bit ridiculous. So in order to have things move along more expeditiously, you submit your maintenance and monitoring plan to the planning director. The planning director, along with either a geotechnical engineer or a geologist, reviews it. The plan is prepared by an engineer, so it's, it's not just something that's written on the you know, back of a napkin. It is a professionally prepared plan. That plan is reviewed. It's in the view of your staff this is something that warrants coming before the planning commission, then of course it will not be approved as maintenance 
and monitoring. It is something that would have to be an amendment to the permit. But if it's simply just a piece of rock fell off, let's say a, 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 you know, a piece of the uh, shop piece fell down and needs to be repaired, or you know that pampas grass that we were talking about that needs to be um, cut away and, and herbicide needs to be put in. I don't think you really need to have that go back to the planning commission again for an amendment to the permit. That can be done as ordinary maintenance and repair and shouldn't really be considered development under a new permit. So that's really the purpose of the maintenance and the monitoring agreement. It's very um, ordinary these days to have this sort of maintenance and monitoring agreement and actually, that one um, came from a project that I worked on for a county of Santa Cruz. Um, I've done about three or four of those for the county of Santa Cruz on various projects. Um, and I've also done them in the city of Santa Cruz. Um, and I've done a couple for the Coastal Commission projects as well. So these aren't unusual at all. They're, they're pretty commonplace nowadays. And I can answer any other questions you might have about them um, and any other questions you have on the project. And if, George, if you're there, if you can raise your hand or I think you may be on the phone. I'm not sure how to tell him to do it for the phone, but he might be able to ask, answer Commissioner Westman's question about the pampas grass. I think the answer is the intent is to cut the pampas grass off, apply the herbicide, and to close up the crack there. But how the crack is going to be closed up, he'd have to answer that for you. I don't know technically how it's going to be done. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Um, are there any questions of, uh, of Ms. Hamilton while she's on the line? Very good. That was very, very helpful and instructive. Thank you. Um, are there, uh, are there any, Brian, are there any other comments from the public? I'm not seeing any other hands raised. No emails. All right. If there are <clears throat> no more public comments, we'll move on then to planning commission deliberations. Anybody wish to uh, make a comment on this proposal? Uh, seeing no hands raised, I, uh, I have a, a concern. It, it, you know, you brought up Brian. You brought up that illustration of the uh, of the cliff cliffside, and and that just that just disturbed me. Um, I realize that that this is a maintenance, this is something that's already been established. We're not creating uh, a new structure here. It was already approved in 1998. Nevertheless, I think it's not in the spirit of the LCP. LCP talks about scenic and visual qualities of coastal areas shall be considered and protected as a resource of public importance. And they are to minimize the alteration of the landform um, I worry about what's going to happen on uh, Depot Hill as that cliffside continues to erode and it starts to reach property lines. Is that, are we going to suddenly approve Shot Creek all along that uh, all along that cliffside as well? Um, you know, England's got their White Cliffs of Dover. Is Capitola going to have their Shot Creek Cliffs of Capitola? I, it, it bothers me that uh, that we're heading down a path, or continuing to head, head down a path that, um, you know, the Coastal Commission they would like to weigh in on this, but you know they backed off. I I just assume here what the Coastal Commission's attitude is. I mean they, they I know it's controversial, but they talk about managed retreat. This doesn't seem this seems like a mismanaged retreat to me um, with regards to rising tides and, and, and uh, climate change. So 
Um, having said all that, um, I find it difficult to find a real rationale to disapprove this. I mean, um, I would like to, but it's pretty solid taste. Um, and and uh, it, it's an owner who just wants to maintain their property and it. And, and there's plenty of precedent. And this is by far not the first or even the most egregious instance of armoring the cliff side. So, um, I just, um, I, you know, th those are just my comments. Um, I'm willing to hear any other comments or, or a motion. Ah, we have some hands raised. Good. Uh, Commissioner Newman. Okay, yeah, I had my hand raised in the old fashioned way, and that didn't uh, work. So. Uh, I, I, the problem is, I don't have, uh, I don't oh, have a gallery. Oh, no view. <laughs> okay. I don't have a gallery, view, so I can't see your face. I also only have this participant thing up. All right. I'll, I'll, okay, so, uh, I guess I'll respond to your comments, which is really sort of ties in with what I was going to say. Is that this is a very different uh, hat we're wearing than we usually wear in our uh, meetings when we're dealing with uh, buildings being built in Capitola. And it, we're really um, enforcing the uh, Coastal Commission Act uh, as it uh, uh, intersects with our LCP. And the um, Coastal Commission has an appeal uh, rights over, over those kinds of decisions in general, and they are much stricter uh, than I think we have ever been in terms of enforcing the uh, goals of the Coastal Act. So if they signed off on this, then it seems to me that uh, I don't really see what issue we have. As far as future armoring, uh, I mean, it's so, so difficult to to, uh, to get a permit to do that now that I don't think you need to be concerned that this is opening the door to more armoring of the hill of the uh, bus. So I just think we follow the Coastal Commission on this. If they approve it, uh, I don't see any reason not to. But I do um, technically find the uh, maintenance agreement a little bit uh, in need of polish. I would recommend that the city attorney uh, do one more review of that just in terms of the uh, sort of the uh, draftsmanship of it. That doesn't go to the substance of the agreement. I, I, don't, I don't have any comments on the substance. Are, were you suggesting that that, uh, that, that portion uh, of the proposal be removed from the from a motion like you would no, admit no no i just i'm i'm throwing it out as a uh, just kind of a suggestion that uh, there are some i mean there are misspellings there are some references and i i think it was a layman must have had a hand in that in taking it from another document it, that's how it strikes me yes uh, Commissioner, the city attorney's office would be happy to review that document. Yeah, I think it needs uh, not not to say that attorneys are the only ones that can draft documents or at all, but I think this one could use a little bit of help. <laughs> uh, thank you, Commissioner Newman. I hope you're right about the uh, armoring of the, the hillside. Uh, I see Commissioner Weston has her hand raised. Uh, yes. Um, Actually, Commissioner Newman said, made most of the comments that I was going to make. Um, it seems that this was a project that was approved in 1998. And uh, at this point, all we're talking about is some maintenance of that project. And uh, I think we all understand that anything constructed that's supposed to last for 50 years uh, needs maintenance, even if it's the Golden Gate Bridge, they have to constantly maintain that to keep it standing. Uh, so uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the project um, uh, and include in that motion that the um, agreement be reviewed by the city attorney's office uh, prior to it being signed. So that's a motion to approve the project with the staff conditions and including Mr. Newman's request that the city attorney review the uh, maintenance agreement. I'll, 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 
It was a race to, to, who, to second. Uh, I think uh, I Commissioner Ruth beat me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion by Commissioner Weston and a second by Commissioner Ruth. Is there Wilk. any further discussion on this motion before we take a vote? Yes, Chair Wilk, I just wanted to uh, clarify. Um, again, the City Attorney's Office would be happy to take a look at, at that agreement. Um, we can certainly make uh, cleanup changes, uh, but we would not be changing any of the substance of the agreement, uh, just to clarify so that it will match um, what is being approved tonight, at least on substance, and we'll just make sure that um, uh, it's a little bit cleaner. That's certainly what I intended. Uh, is that okay, Commissioners Weston and Ruth? Yes. Okay. If there is no further discussion, uh, Louis, could we have a roll call vote? Yes, please. Councilmember Christensen? Aye. Councilmember Newman? Aye. Aye. Councilman Ruth? Aye. Chair Wilk? Reluctant aye. <laughs> Passes unanimously. Good luck with your projects. Okay, let's move on to uh, director's report. Item six on the agenda. Do we have a director's report? Yeah, just uh, one update is that uh, we are agendized for the outdoor dining ordinance to be reviewed by the Coastal Commission on June 10th. Okay. Um, is that, that's just the staff in the Coastal Commission? There's no, yes. that's, a, that's not a public uh, meeting? Oh no, it, it is the public meeting. It's the, it's the, it's their review. And that's going to be, is that listed on our calendar of events? Um, we received a, a notice. I'm, I can send that, I can forward that to the commissioners. I think that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, anything else? Nope, nothing else. All right, let's go to item seven, commission communications. If anybody wish to make any <laughs> last minute comments. If not, uh, uh, Nick, I think you're gonna get your wish for a short meeting. <laughs> I figured it would be. <laughs> Okay, with that, we will adjourn. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.